Russell Flint Keeler was born in Elk Creek in Erie County, Pennsylvania on March 23, 1833, to a devout Methodist family. It is said that his great-grandfather was a local preacher under John Wesley. At the age of four, Russell moved to Erie, Pennsylvania with his parents, William and Melinda Keeler. At age 20, he graduated from Allegheny College in Meadville. He married Anna Sumner Howe on New Year's Day, 1857. He was ordained a deacon in the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1860 and an elder two years later. Becoming a Methodist circuit rider, Russell served congregations in Leon, Union City, Clymer, Fairview, Clarion, South Oil City, Tionesta, and 10th Street in Erie. Moving to the East Ohio Conference, Russell continued on at Rootstown, Conneaut, Chardon, Perry, Chagrin Falls, Geneva, Bridgeport, Bel Air, Mount Union, Niles, Hubbard, North Bloomfield, Rock Creek, Charlestown, New Concord, Middlefield, and Levittsburg. In 1897, William McKinley was inaugurated as the 25th President of the United States. At age 78, Queen Victoria celebrated her long reign's Diamond Jubilee. The United States annexed the Hawaiian Islands and Japan issued a formal protest, and John Philip Sousa introduced audiences to a new march he composed, The Stars and Stripes Forever. In Charlestown, Ohio, a new minister arrived in town. The Reverend R. F. Keeler moved into the 11-year-old parsonage along with his family. In the winter of 1898, Anna became ill. The eldest of their six children, Frank Coleman Keeler, worked as head proofreader for the Cleveland Press. Russell wrote to Frank and his wife, Laura. Charlestown, Ohio. February 18th, 1898. Dear children, I presume you were shocked on receiving that telegram last night that your mother was dead. So were we when we realized she was dying. The doctor told us it was more of a nervous trouble than anything else, and when her nerves were quieted, she'd be all right. And this deceived us because she made so much ado all the time. She moaned saying, oh my, or something like it constantly. We could not rest or sleep while she moaned all the time. And when we told her she must stop it, she always replied, I can't help it, I am so sick. Wednesday morning, her left hand seemed paralyzed. And she said it was, but we thought that she had lain on that side for over a day, that it was only asleep by the pressure of her body on it. But it did not get any better at all. The doctor did not come Wednesday. So when he came yesterday and I told him her hand was paralyzed, he examined her and said it was only a result of nervousness, that when her nerves got quieted, her hand would be all right, that he could feel her pulse just as well in that wrist as the other. This deceived us completely until late in the afternoon, we saw she was really dying, but did not look for it so soon. After supper, we gathered about her bed, but she did not recognize us at all. At a quarter to eight, she quietly stopped breathing and was gone. I said to her as I feared the end was near, safe in the arms of Jesus. She said, yes, eternally with God shut in. This so overcame me, as I saw she felt she was dying, that I burst into tears and left the room. She was delirious most of the afternoon and evening until she died. The shock was so sudden and unexpected. Grace had gone over to a neighbor's in the afternoon, and when we saw your mother dying, we sent for her, but your mother was dead before Grace got home. She died so suddenly. She said so many times last Thursday and Friday that if I had not been sick, she would have been in Cleveland visiting you. She seemed to think it would be such a treat and doted on it so much. You can have this to comfort you, that you made the last days of her life so happy, thinking you cared for her and wanted her to make you a visit. 
We have arranged for the funeral Sunday, and on Monday we'll take her to Erie for burial. We shall go by the way of Cleveland. Can't you come here to the funeral? Can you go with us to Erie? We wish you could, but I must stop as I have so many letters to write. Can't think what to write more. We'll tell you when we see you. We are overwhelmed and don't know what to do, but the people are so kind and are doing all they can for us. We are among true friends. Your afflicted father, R.F. Keeler. She was buried in Erie, Pennsylvania. Her husband was buried beside her 10 years later. <laughs>